It's because it's starting. Uh, says we're live. Go ahead. Mine says off air. Uh, you're live. All right. Well, we're back with another episode of Ask EJ. I think this is episode number 40, you know, 41. All right, man, let me have it. All right. So Anthony Dark out of Fairbanks, Alaska asks, uh, pressure pad equipment for uh, firearms. Where do you put them so the wires don't get in your way as far as functionality of your weapon? Did you say he was from Alaska? Yep, from the AK. <laughs> uh, and he wants to know about pressure pad stuff, like where you put it? Yeah, where do you put them so the wires don't get in your way as far as functionality of the weapon? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what you're saying. All right. Um, well, on a rifle, you would put them somewhere around the hand guards. Oh, I got mine right here. So what you want to do is uh, you want to put them somewhere in these little holes area, kind of wrap them between Picatinny rail and the way this one sleeps down, uh, you know, just out of the way, right? But then you may have to put them uh, a little tighter and into place with, say, a, um, a zip tie or something. If not, they kind of just hang around. And that could be a problem. Say, like on this AK here, they come out of the, uh, the foregrip, right, and it just runs up. What I should do is take some type of zip tie between this opening and this opening and zip tie it right there. The problem is, is that this AK gets so hot that it melts the zip tie. So, you know, in some cases, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. You may be able to wrap it around some other piece of equipment um, or the sights, kind of like I did over here in this, in this AR, where the front sight is actually folded down on top of the wire and the wire actually sits in between the groove there on that pick a 10 ear. Sometimes they're called 1913 rails. Uh, and then it just, you know, hangs out right there. But like with the laser, see how I've got the zip tie on it. It keeps the laser from coming off. Uh, you could do that with your wire. Um, in this case, I also have, I get the lining right you see i've got some 550 cord right here that's tied to the back of of that laser and i just took all that white part out of the middle okay all that white all the white strings in the 550 cord i took it out tied it off and then when i was done with it i took a little lighter and uh melted the ends melt the ends mash it together that way they won't come undone uh, but mostly guys you know, we're talking about wires. Um, they're not very long. So you want to get them to, you know, get them to where your hands will get on the pressure pad, no problem, without interfering with the wire. Um, and then keeping them out of your way altogether, you want to zip tie. But here's the thing. Um, zip ties melt. So let's say you wanted to get it um, tie it off and you're afraid about something melting, um, you know, there's not a whole lot you can do. Like, don't use a twist tie because that's metal. Uh, even if you ripped all the plastic stuff off of it, that's metal. It's going to conduct heat. It's going to burn right through, right through your wire. Uh, you have to be careful with um, wrapping stuff like a zip tie around, say, a gas tube uh, or how close it is to the barrel because you could find yourself in a world of hurt right there. So uh, best case scenario is, you know, you get it in between that 90 degrees. Say if you've got four rails on there, like, like such best case scenario is to get it right into this groove right here and get it away from the barrel as far as possible. Um, I don't have mine tied down because it just seems to me that the, the inside 
the zip tie part of the zip tie that's on the inside of that that rail um, tends to to get too hot over time and it becomes very brittle if it doesn't melt all the way so you know 550 cords a good way to um, to secure stuff um, but like I said you could use a zip tie just as long as it's away from the barrel or and or the uh, gas tube it's kind of just, you know, you know, however you can work it. There's no, um, you know, Call of Duty special way of doing it. It's just kind of whatever you think you can do. I mean, that's why I got you know, 550 core. You know, I use it for so many different things because um, it, it works. It's pretty strong. So that's what I would tell you. Uh, you know, they always have some type of bend to them when they come out of the box. Just to look at that bend and see how you can manipulate that bend to both attach it to the device and or uh, so that the pressure pad sits in the right orientation uh, so that you can depress it when you need to. So, I don't know. There's no real like school to go to for that. <laughs> it is what it is, brother. You just kind of make it work. All right. Alaska. It reminds me of that movie with uh, Sandra Bullock. And then the dude who plays oh uh, Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Deadpool. Reynolds, Deadpool, right? Yeah, yeah. Where does his family live? Uh, Alaska. <laughs> yeah, that was good. One. Yeah, especially. Um, all right, next one comes from John Davis in Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati. That reminds me of the movie right. with uh, who's the girl that was in ET. Uh, and then she's in all these Adam Sandler movies. Uh, oh, job. Like Drew Barrymore. Fifteen people have already said her name. Drew already. Barrymore, right? Barrymore. She was in a movie with uh, John Wick. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, Babes in Toyland. <laughs> Going back on. Huh? Cincinnati. Yeah, that was, that was many years ago. All right. All right. Uh, what, what, what is old John Davis one? John asks, uh, when out in the field or SHTF, yeah, do you have a blowout kit for your battle rifle, like extra gas rings, firing pin, extractor upgrade kit, etc.? Well, that's a good question. Uh, no, I don't. Um, hmm. Not a bad idea. Uh, I carry an extra bolt, like the entire bolt, but I don't carry like gas rings, extractor kits, or anything like that. Mainly because you need a tabletop to work on that stuff, and you need you need some time. <laughs> uh, and in the field, it's it's not conducive to that, even. Even tailgate medicine on that thing, it, you're going to – more than likely it's going to drop on some rocks, going to shoot off your little dental pick tool that you're using or the extractor tool if you've got one of those from Brown Ells or Midway USA, um, the bolt tool that is. No, I just carry a whole bolt. I don't carry the, the bolt carrier, just an extra bolt, a new bolt. That's all I carry. Um now, in my, hold on, I'll show you. In my uh, big kit, when I go to the, when I teach classes, right? Uh, <laughs> excuse me. I have everything. I didn't know I was going to show you all this, so just hang on. Uh, I have everything. Um, all the individual, in all the individual parts. Hang on. All right. So, in this little doohickey. AR parts, one side opens for upper and the other side for lower, right? So in upper, you open it up, like every single part is labeled and then all the individual um, parts are in their baggie. So this is a ejector spring. 
right? So I got a bunch of ejector springs. Um, here's extra extractors uh, and so on and so forth, all right? But, all right, so when I'm done with a bolt or a bolt goes down, so I'm putting these little baggies and I mark it. So this says gas rings need replacing. All right, let's see what this one says. Uh, replaced extractor and ejector. And then I date it. All right. Uh, hang on. By the way, that's just like a little Stanley kit you got at Home Depot. I think nothing, you know, sexy or nothing. If you wanted to mess around with your bolt, like you brought, gas rings or extractor or some stuff like that, then you need to get one of these tools. Uh, I think I got this from Brownells. It's an AR-15 bolt vise. AR-15 bolt vise. Uh, and you can replay this later, but it's part number 749-003-708. I say again, 749-003-708. I got it on Brownells. Here's what it looks like. And what you do is you unscrew this dealio back, like you can't screw it up, all right? Put your bolt in there, and as you tighten this down, um, it takes all the pressure off so you can run that roll pin out and change your extractor, uh, extractor spring and the O-ring, the donut, um, makes it pretty simple. And then with it, uh, with it replaced and you put the pressure back on it, then you can put that roll pin back in. If not, that, that roll pin is is a mother to get off. So I carry one of those uh, in, that, in that repair kit. So um, that's, that's a pretty good question, actually. I would just carry an entire bolt if I were you. Um, and then, you know, you just it's easier to drop the bolt in uh, as one unit and then repair it later when you get to the rear. Not a bad, not a bad question there, Cincinnati. All right. All right. Number three. Number three is coming from Casey out of Rickman, Tennessee. Tennessee? Oh. Yeah, Rickman. Where's that? This better not be a dumb question, Tennessee. So, uh... He asked, when going into a communist facility, like a school or courthouse, and you need to lock your firearm inside your vehicle, uh -huh. do you move your holster without drawing your pistol, or do you draw your pistol to lock it in your ride? Uh, why? Drawing the pistol can be done more discreetly and is easier, but recently I failed to reholster my pistol in returning to my truck because my holster feels the same with or without my pistol. Leaving it holster would keep a peaking bystander from feeling threatened and less chance of an ND. What's an ND? Just I don't know. An ND? You don't know it. All right. It's a negligent discharge. Okay. I'll see. You now I know. All right. So I'm dealing with folks. Okay. Uh... He's asking if you're about you got to go into somewhere that won't let you carry your gun, and do you take off the gun and leave the holster, or do you just take the whole holster and gun off together? That was asking. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, you know, ideally, you take the holster off with the gun in it. Anytime you've got, and, and let's say you're seated in the vehicle. Okay. So. So let's just, go, let's just go through this middle gymnastics for a moment. Um, you draw out that smoke wagon, right? And you're going to sit down somewhere, uh, you know, in a console or underneath the front mat or side mat or whatever. Then you're going to put your shirt back down over your holster and roll up in there. At that point, the only one who feels safe is nobody. Because the other people didn't bring their gun. And you put yours in the car. Uh, if you're going to take it off, I would keep it in the holster. And here's why. Because 
when you've got to pick that gun up again, more than likely, you know, and don't say no, it won't, because I'm saying this, like be honest with yourself, more than likely you're in a seated position in that vehicle, and now you're trying to, to drive it in uh, to a holster that has gotten cattywampus because of the way you're seated. And that makes for uh, a perfect storm for a stupid problem. Um, so it would be better just to put the whole holster on. Yeah, that's it, depending on what type of holster you've got. Now, if you've got one of those holsters that's an outside of the waistband holster and you got to, you know, do your whole belt and everything, um, sucks to be you because that's what I would do. I just take the whole holster off. Uh, for me, it's an inside of the waistband with the clips and I just pull up, out on the clips and I can lift the whole thing out, uh, put it down, and when I'm ready to go, put it back on. Then, I, I mean, I had to undo my belt a little bit and even the top button of my jeans so I can get the pants wide enough to set it down in there without, you know, pushing all my stuff down uh, and then tighten up my belt. It's kind of awkward, um, you know, doing it in a car like that. Didn't seem that awkward at 16. But at 41, it would be awkward. Wrong situation. Um, okay, back to the, the gun thing. Yeah, I would. That's the way I would do it: is to take the holster off. You just you open up Pandora's box for problems anytime you pull the gun out of the holster in a confined space, with the intent of at some point in time putting it back into that holster in that same confined space. And crazy things happen, um, and there are little munchkins that like to get inside the trigger guard and screw around with your trigger. Because uh, we would all deny that it was ever, you know, my finger. But yes, things could happen. A shirt tail, pants not right. The belt makes the pants do weird stuff. Um, a section of the seat belt uh, receiver, you know, was sitting in an awkward position. It doesn't matter. Uh, it could happen. So uh, for me, I just take the holster off with the gun in it. Uh, and then when I go through the metal detectors, you know, I don't. Pop positive for freedom. Um, and then when I come back out, you know, it's a little awkward, but we get it back in. Uh, and then when I get to my next place where I can get out of the vehicle and adjust myself, I'll do that. Uh, and then, you know, get it back to the way it was. But yeah, that's, that's not a bad question, man. Um, you know, a lot of people would say, you know, just take the gun off. It's just a holster. Okay. It's just a holster. So then what, you know, your, your communist cohorts think is, well, where's the gun? You're here to murder everybody, especially, you know, babies and kittens. Um, so I'm sure you got it on you. Uh, if you're really going to a place where you, sh you know, you should not have a gun and you feel so led to take that gun off and just take the whole holster off with it too. That's my personal opinion. I mean, you do whatever the heck you want to do, man. Um, I, you just ask my opinion, so I'm just giving you mine. That's, that's what I do. So, but my holster is conducive to that type of removal. Um, so I don't have a problem. If you've got one of those, like, let's see, I don't, I don't have a backing on it, but you know, you got one of these type of goofball holsters, right? And it's got that paddle back here and then your, your belt has to snake through it. Like, like lightning McQueen, serpentine, serpentine. Then, it, you know, it could be a little awkward. But what's even more awkward is explaining why you have a bullet hole in an ass cheek. Because that ain't sexy and chicks don't dig it. So you can't even come up with a real cool story. You know, there I was. Uh, no, I shot myself trying to put my gun back in my holster, sitting in a car, you know, listening to the XM radio. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing heroic about that. So let's not do that. Um, Avoid a lot of these stupid opportunities for you to make an idiot of yourself with a firearm because what happens is those who do not want us to carry around freedom and liberty um, use that as an excuse to say, see, see, this is why you guys don't need to be carrying guns. So, I mean, not to mention you've got a new hole uh, where you didn't have one earlier that morning, but you know, it hurts us all when we have people who make um, unnecessary uh, bad decisions. So as a community, we're not that big of a community. And 
uh, you know, every, every ripple that rolls through the community touches all of us in some shape, form or fashion. So try to limit that as much as possible because Lord forbid, you know, what's going to happen to you if you have to use it to defend your life. You know, you had intent. You were, you were going around trying to find someone to shoot. We know. So you already got the deck stacked against you in public opinion. Um, let's not give them another reason uh, to, to further their cause. All right. Not a bad question. Not a bad question at all. They're getting better. Good. All right, guys. Well, that's, uh, that's another episode of Ask EJ. Check us out on Facebook, YouTube, uh, you know, Insta, Twitter, all that crap. Um, you book. And uh, don't forget to check out the website, legallyconcealed.org. Check out the store. See if there's something you may want to purchase for you or mama or whoever. Uh, maybe buy one of your communist friends, something that's pro-gun related. That'd be cool. All right. Uh, don't forget to check out my book, Counter Violence, your guide to uh, surviving a deadly encounter. And sales are through the roof right now, not because, uh, you know, it's got an awesome cover. It's good content in there. And I hope you get yourself a copy of that. All right. Legallyconcealed.org. And uh, if you want to get more of this type of content, uh, stuff we don't put out on the web, join the Sheepdog Society. Uh, you can do that through legallyconcealed.org and uh, get a whole bunch more content too. Special videos just for the Sheepdog Society, guys. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining me. And we'll have uh, another episode of Ask EJ out pretty soon. All right. As always, guys, stay alert. And practice often. We'll see you next time.